Good evening, everybody. My name is Michael Aloisi, and I had the amazing honor and pleasure to co-write A Life with Ghosts with the amazing Steve here. And tonight we get to do a live signing for Premier Collectibles. Uh, you can get the book, a signed autographed copy of the book, at premiercollectibles.com, Life with Ghosts, which is at the bottom of the screen there. Uh, and so we're excited to be here tonight. Steve, how are you today? Hey, I'm doing good. Uh, thanks, everybody. I know that um, uh, they've told us that they're quite a, a, a bit of a, a pre-order uh, load for uh, the book through Premier Collectibles. So uh, this is really cool. We're going to get them all signed uh, for everybody. And uh, pretty soon we're going to take some questions. Uh, people have been submitting questions. Uh, but first, we're going to chat a little bit about the book, uh, about how it came about, uh, how uh, Mike and I uh, went back and forth. and. Uh, yeah, that's going to be the, the, the fun part. Not that your questions aren't fun. It's <laughs> going to be Just fun too, no, nothing else. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, so, Steve, you've been doing investigations for over 30 years, right? About 30 years? Close, yeah. yeah. I mean, not professionally, obviously. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, uh, but still you've but, been doing them. Yeah. Uh, I've been out there, yeah, for a long, long time. Yeah. <laughs> so, so after 30 years, how come now was the time for you to do a book? Like, what, what made it after all that time? You're like, all right, this is the time that I want to tell my stories. Ooh, I, there was, it was actually a few things that happened uh, a little more recently investigating that said these are, uh, you know, experiences that I had, whether it be paranormal or, you know, emotionally profound or, or even something that got me thinking in terms of, you know, maybe how my life could be enhanced through what I'm experiencing there. And I was like, this is, uh, and that was kind of a, a catalyst. And then quite honestly, I, I have a book uh, behind me uh, from a red uh, skeleton, you know, who was just a, 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 a bunch of ghost stories curated uh, by him and uh, put into a book. It's actually a really fun book, but mm -hmm. uh, that sort of, you know, gave me an idea of uh, not just that, not just collected ghost stories, but mm -hmm. uh, ones uh, from around uh, the country that I've investigated that have meant uh, or meant a lot to me uh, for the reasons I, I said before. But that was really uh, the catalyst for it. A few things happened recently in the mm -hmm. past, you know, five or 10 years. I said, wow, these are really profound. Uh, and I should maybe uh, tell them a lot of people I've heard over the years um, about, you know, writing a memoir or just about my life. <laughs> I'm probably yeah. not that interesting. You know, so <laughs> oh, it is. It <laughs> is. <laughs> let's put some ghost stories in there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it, it's um, I think that's how, how it started. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so there's in the book, you know, there's a lot of uh, your personal experiences, your um, your thoughts, your beliefs on on certain aspects of it, uh, but there's also a lot of the locations. Um, what with the literally thousand of some uh, some odd locations that you've been to, what made you pick these ones for the book? I, I didn't want it to be just you know a, a bunch of ghost stories. Uh, they really had to be something that. Uh, meant a lot to me. And there were really, uh, a, 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 as you know, uh, writing it with me, there was a, a bit of a criteria that they all had to mm -hmm. fit into and, and it had to do with history, my how much fun I had at the place. and But really it was uh, either a, a, a place where I had an experience, for instance, a Buckstead Manor uh, that's in the book yeah. that uh, was so amazing that it had to be told uh, or something that, uh, meant something to me in terms of, hey, I probably shouldn't do that in life because it didn't work out for this guy, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like learning from the history and <laughs> things on cases. Um, and then, of course, to give a, a real inside uh, look into, you know, what we do as paranormal investigators, uh, go a bit, actually a lot deeper than a, a television show could, uh, and really get a, a personal perspective you know, if I had this experience, what was going through my mind? Uh, yeah. How did I decide to investigate it a certain way? Uh, what was going on between Jay and I at the time? What Tango and I were up to, me and mm -hmm. Sherry, whoever, you know, Dustin and I, and, and just putting all those stories. Uh, it really had to be something that, that meant something to me to, to make it into the book. Yeah, and, and you know, 
the episode of a show is what about 42 minutes and you guys investigate for countless hours and so only so much gets into an episode and so with the book you can expand upon it and kind of you know go deeper into your thoughts of what happened in that moment and stuff like that which is really kind of cool and interesting yeah that, you know i also wanted it to serve as a, a bit of a um uh, a reminder that hey you know there are actual uh people who had these uh you know these terrible things that happened to them let's not forget about them we all want to go after the ghosts and get that evidence but you know they were people in most cases and, and they had lives and loves and losses and have gone through things that we don't really want to think about going through and uh, let's not forget about them let's honor them and, and remember and keep their spirit if you will uh alive and i think the book does a good a uh, good job at that uh, yeah and, and when you know we were working on it that was one of your most important things was saying you know everyone just thinks about you know ghosts 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 and not so much about that these were people you know and, and that's yeah. kind of like something that we tend to forget when we're watching a ghost story or you know an episode of a show and stuff it's more about the experience rather than hey you know this was a person you know which is kind of important it, it is and if you remember when we first started talking um you know ha or having conversations with with publishers uh it really was uh you know gallery books and, and simon and schuster who really uh who enjoyed that aspect of the book you know they, yeah. they were really cool saying you know i love that there is a, a bit of a respect paid to those who came before you in this book and you're not just going after the, the ghost and the, the grizzly um, you know, you're, you're remembering that there was some emotion behind these things. People died, you know. Um, yes. But also what's cool in the book is uh, there's literally a, a chapter called It's Not All, you know, Trauma and Tragedy. Sometimes it is a haunting of devotion or love or, or something else. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, some grisly sort of thing that happened. Yeah. Yeah. Not a traumatic thing. Something with love, and which is great. Yeah. Good questions, Mike. Look at you go. Well, you know, I'm a writer. <laughs> I do have to ask questions to people sometimes. Uh, there's a lot of really uh, great comments in there on the side from everybody. Thank you. A lot of people excited to read the book, which is awesome. Uh, a couple of people are already reading the book, which thank you for doing that. That's awesome. All right. Are you ready to go to the questions? Yeah. Yeah. Let's All do right. it. We have All a right. You start getting get ready through. to start signing, which, you know, I, I believe in you. I know you can do two things at once. You can sign and answer. So. Yes. All right. Here we go. First question. Actually, look at that. We're two Massachusetts boys. And the first question I got here is from Webster Mass from uh, Kaylee. Uh, how old were you when you had your first experience? That's a great question. Uh, because my first experience, I don't think I knew was an experience until after. Um, and I had to do with a friend. I was a, a kid, very young. So young, in fact, that we were playing uh, light bright um and i remember hearing a, a weird like flicking sound like something a little plastic i don't even remember but it was weird and then i remember my friend crying her name is jamie i remember vividly on the ground uh, and i'm like what's wrong with her you know what's going on in her day um and then i saw uh, a little these little plastic pegs flinging and hitting the wall and I still didn't realize that I, I just didn't get it. I don't think my brain put anything together. Uh, and then I remember her parents coming over, picking her up and saying, it's okay, it'll be over soon, don't worry. And I remember her looking at me in her exact words, uh, Jamie needs to go to bed, uh, if you could have your mom, you know, that sort of thing. And, and I never really thought of that as a paranormal experience until uh, I was in my teenage years, you know, maybe 17, 18, uh, when I, I talked to her. And she said, don't you remember what was always happening? When she found out I was really into this stuff. And she's mm. like, remember? And, and she would lay it all to me. I was like, oh my gosh, that was. Um, and so that could have been my first paranormal experience, even though I didn't realize that it was. Uh, but the first one where I think it was maybe one of mine uh, was in a graveyard. And, and uh, you know, don't break and enter. That's a terrible mm. thing. I'm not saying if I was or wasn't, but don't do it, folks. <laughs> Um, and it did feel like uh, something was sort of grabbing at me as I was uh, walking out. And uh, that was pretty uh, intense. Uh, but 
looking back, I always have a question mark there. You know, could it have been, um, you know, uh, something in the environment that I just didn't realize now that I'm much more tuned in to disproving and looking at things a bit deeper back then of course i wasn't mm -hmm. um so you know was that a true experience maybe uh, but i i usually count that as my first i i if i had light bright pieces flying off as a kid i would that's like that's literally a horror movie right there that that would that would traumatize me but yeah like, put you on the path look at the path it put you on i guess it did i didn't yeah. i didn't realize it at the time yeah yeah all right, the next one is from Amy in San Diego, uh, and she says, I have been a paranormal investigator for 23 years, and I still have a bucket list of places to investigate. Do you have a bucket list as well? And if so, what is your number one place? I am uh, so fortunate to be in a position where a lot of my bucket list places um, I've been able to go to, you know, Waverly Hills. Uh, I did miss Norwich State Hospital uh, when uh, the TAPS team and Ghost Hunters went there. Uh, Tango and I were uh, filming a show called Ghost Hunters Academy, uh, and we missed it, but I wanted to go there so bad. I would say uh, the Coliseum uh, would be really awesome. Uh, you'd think of all of the, you know, sadness that, I don't, I don't know if it was sadness, but trauma for sure. You know, four hundred or six hundred thousand animals, uh, four hundred thousand, or I might be making that up, but you know, a lot of people <laughs> died. Yeah. You know, uh, but it does seem like it would be really cool. There are a, a few places. Disney, of course, would be a dream. There are a lot of hauntings coming from there, believe it or not. Um, yeah, but I've been to a lot. Uh, Velisca Axe Murder House. I would love to get to. I haven't been there yet. Which one? Um, uh, the Velisca Axe Murder House. Where's uh, that? That's in Iowa. That oh. would be uh, super awesome. And we've always tried to get into the Amityville house, uh, and they've always yeah. turned us down. Hmm. Um, it was for but, sale like two years cool. ago. We all should have chipped in and bought it. Woo -wee. Yeah, that would have been fun. That would have been fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, where do you live the amityville house yeah, exactly We're like no you know <laughs> want to sleep over come on <laughs> all right let's see next question uh do, 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 from Brittany in kenley north carolina what was the most difficult part of writing this book i guess that's more towards me uh, what, what was hard for you, uh, Steve, when coming to um, picking stories and, and what to tell and stuff? I think um, a lot of it was sort of the, the triage that went into uh, figuring out exactly uh, what stories from each location mm -hmm. should go in and that sort of yeah. thing. And I don't mean ghost stories. When I say stories, it doesn't necessarily mean a ghost story. It could be a, a story of uh, something beautiful poignant it could be just a moment in time it could be an experience i had uh, with mm -hmm. a fellow investigator there are plenty of ghost stories obviously but uh weeding through all of that uh, was pretty difficult um mm -hmm. we started you, if you remember we started with certain ones yeah uh, and then we we, we had uh, some uh, that we didn't feel were quite um and then yeah. as the book sort of grew uh, some you know fell off and 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 then made made the list buck steep manor Yep. Uh, we, we added a, a bit later in, in the writing process mm -hmm. just because uh, it's not a place that anybody can go to can go or to, access, yeah. it, but um, it's the story is so awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, that was probably for me the, the most difficult part of it, but I think yeah. we, we got it down pretty good. Yeah, what about yeah. you? Uh, for me, it was because the, the opening of each chapter is the history of the location um and so for me not having been to a lot of these places was you know kind of researching what they look like and trying to capture you know the feel of the location and you know recreating it um having not been there you know so i had to do a lot of research of looking up the place watching videos reading about histories and stuff so it was very um intensive and kind of research and stuff which is you know daunting at times you know especially when some places don't have a ton of uh, photos and tons of things and stuff. So having to go through and then ask you, you know, pick your brain, be like, what is this? Was it like this? What does this look like? You know, and stuff. And so it's, it's a, it's a process, but, but worth it. 
Oh, it was, yeah, absolutely. It was a great experience, uh, quite honestly. And, you know, a gallery and, and, and the gang over there and, and mm -hmm. you know, Ed and, and um, they really were just let us have full creative control over. There was no like, because I got a lot of questions, quite honestly, like, are they making you put certain things or is there, yeah. you know, thinking that a, a publisher would want, you know, certain and yeah. quite honestly, they were so awesome with everything they were just like this is yep. great send us more this is great yeah, you know, yeah they, really, they really were because because i've worked with publishers in the past who's like we need the scandalous things we need this we need that and i'm like eh, you know and, and ed over there was, was fantastic to us so yeah that that was cool the, the process was was awesome i would agree with you where some of the, the research was um because you, you can't just put something out there if it's not uh, you know especially in, in, a, in a book or, or in, in a documentary in a tv show you can't just say something and then hope it's right you know it has to be the history has to be accurate everything has mm -hmm. to be accurate and uh, i would say that took maybe some of the, the longest uh, you know yeah really making sure everything all of the history all yep. of the stories that are accumulated not putting in any stories that weren't factual because uh, a lot of these places uh, there are stories that will make it into the history and into their tours and stuff that might not be factual once you do actual research and we didn't yeah. want to perpetuate any of those so everything in here is yeah. uh, are things that we could document and, and back up with, with yeah. literature and whatnot yeah and, and it's hard when when on the internet because you have to find the re reliable sources because sometimes you have stories from this site and then another site and the dates don't match and stuff so it, it was tricky getting to nail it down and make sure we got the the correct information oh yeah we, we reached out to a lot of uh, clerks and historians and, and a lot of hands-on research going through uh, micro fee, whatever we could do you know, <laughs> to get the real uh, facts. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I have a lot of friends at, at some of these places. So, you know, they would just say, oh, give me a minute, you know, and go through and send pictures of the document from the newspaper and be like, here, okay, great. <laughs> you know, uh, that worked yeah. out uh, quite yeah. nice. Um, I see someone here uh, in these comments. Yep. Um, Steve, come investigate with us at the Velisca Axe Murder House on the 31st. Oh, man. I wish I could, Tim. Thank you for the invite. <laughs> that would be an absolute blast. And then I see one here. Have you ever thought about investigating the Lizzie Borden House? We did. Mm -hmm. uh, we did investigate Lizzie Borden House. It was uh, a, a really fun experience. We had some uh, minor activity, but uh, when you're only at a place for a week or so, it's tough to say haunted or not, obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. Lydia in Newcastle, Virginia. Uh, where have you investigated that has been the best quality of evidence overall? Wow. That's a really interesting question. Um, I would say maybe the Crescent Hotel in uh, Crescent Snow. In, uh, uh, it's in Arkansas. What's Eureka, the name Eureka, of that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Mike. Eureka, Eureka, Eureka yeah. Springs. Um, just thermal footage we caught there was mm -hmm. phenomenal. And we go really deep, uh, you, you know, about that place in the book, about our yep. experiences and, and really, you know, I hate to use the phrase, pull back layers, but we did and, and went mm -hmm. really as far into it, um, you know, with off camera stuff and, and things that just happened through our stay there, because that's one of the places that uh, we stayed there while we were investigating. We had the whole place. Which is really cool, yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, I know that it looks like on television we're only at a place for a certain amount of time. And, and sometimes we are only at a place for a certain mm -hmm. amount of time. But uh, we stayed there for two weeks straight, and we, we stayed at that that house. So even off camera, and, and I hate that term too, off camera, but mm -hmm. that just means on our own time when we're not you know actively uh, investigating for the show, uh, we didn't leave that basement, which was the morgue. We were all trying to figure that out, how that thermal footage could have manifested itself, uh, for lack of a, a better term there. Yep. Um, and, and really trying to figure all of that out. But that was just one part of uh, the evidence there. I think we caught some really, really cool stuff. I, I can't say it was the number one place, but that's the one that comes to mind. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I right stayed there now. myself, too, and it, it, it's such a beautiful and unique place and stuff, which is really cool. Yeah, everyone should visit if they haven't. It's a really yeah. eclectic town. It's it, you think, uh, you know, you're going out to Eureka Springs, and but it's a beautiful art 
uh, artsy, mm. uh, vibrant community that, that we had a lot of fun uh, running around that, that town. Yep. All right. Alyssa from Galesburg, Illinois. What is your favorite part about ghost hunting, and what was the best time you had while ghost hunting? It's a great question. Mm -hmm. um, I think the best time I ever had while ghost hunting or investigating was probably at Buckstead Manor. I hate to keep saying it because it's in the book and it sounds like just one of those shameless plugs, but <laughs> Mike, you know, like a, that. Well, yeah, uh, it was the most profound. Yeah, yeah, it was absolutely crazy. Um, but um, yeah, I, I would say that probably mm -hmm. for like. Um, yeah, let's go with that. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's kind of a similar one from Taylor in, oh, I can't say that town. Um, Atascadero. Atascadero. There you go. Atascadero, California. Uh, it says, been watching you for years. What has been your most rewarding experience throughout your years in investigating? Which, which is kind of cool because that's different than, you know, different than a, a big experience. Like, what was the most rewarding? Oh, that's right. I didn't even answer the last question. Sorry. I was letting it slide. Well, it, yeah, I, I, I saw that furrowed brow for a second. I was like, what's his problem? <laughs> I didn't the question. Um, it was uh, why I, I like what means the most to me. Uh, so first would be the experiences like mm -hmm. that. For paranormal, that was the one. But honestly, uh, the paranormal might be there, it might not. Even if it is there, it might not be there while you're there, you mm -hmm. know, or it may be there, but not active or you don't really know. So you do have to uh, rely on other things. For me, the history, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, I soak that up like crazy. You'll see that in the book. It's it's, it's so fascinating and, and awesome. But I think with, with the people I investigate with, you know, like, uh, honestly, uh, investigating with Jay uh, has been such a, a, a I, I, honestly, a, a blessing, a, a tango. My best friend, you know, investigating with him, the laughter we have, yeah. we know when to take it seriously. You know, we really do. Um, uh, and we take it seriously most times, but you've got to know when to have some fun. And uh, Jay, too, you know, people, um, th they get a, a bit of a different idea of him when they watch the shows. Um, but he likes to have fun just as much as anyone else. And he's the first one to play a joke <laughs> or like try to trick you in some way. And, uh, he's just as fun to play, a, a, you know, yeah. to, to joke with. Uh, and Tango, obviously, uh, Sherry, we all just really, you know, razz each other and just have a blast. And um, I think that's my, my favorite part, even over the years, you know. Um, it's just spending time with the, the investigators that I love and, and trust. And, you know, Dustin, Amy, Adam, everybody that I work with. And, and uh, that, that probably is my favorite part. And, and uh, I think... Yeah, that when it comes to investigating, now mm -hmm. there's a lot of spill off effects that mean much more to me, uh, such as, you know, when, when you're able to really help a client, there's a lot of emotional things that happen when you can uh, really help people. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's awesome. And then there's the, the other spillover effect that you don't even realize. You know, I was walking yeah. down the street once uh, and, and a kid came up to me, solemn, not <laughs> happy. And the mom is really ecstatic like this is his favorite show he can't believe it oh my god we're all going crazy okay uh, all right i took the picture of the kid you know super nice but he did not do anything and, and then you know me and, and the person i was with walking away and then the mom comes and, and stops me and said thank you so much uh that's the first time i've seen him smile in in a year uh, apparently his father wow. died Oof. And he never smi hadn't smiled in a full year they never saw him do it and that was wow. the like to know that you can have that uh, yeah. kind of uh, it's it's something that I didn't expect, you know. Yeah, that's nice. All right, non-paranormal question here from Amanda in Depew, New York. Which tattoo is your favorite or most meaningful? I didn't know you had any tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a good question. I, you know, tattoos, everyone is like most people with a lot, they are a roadmap of your life and things mm -hmm. you, you've been into. Um, this whole arm here is all Halloween stuff, not um, 
not the movie necessarily or at all, just the the season, you know, the, the holiday. Uh, see jack o' lanterns, candy corn, uh, candy apple, pumpkins, you know, whatever. Fall leaves. I love that one. I have a Reanimator tattoo. The movie Reanimator, awesome. uh, from a, a dude named Paul Acker. Uh, the artwork is phenomenal, and he's such a cool dude. I love that one. I'd say probably probably those. Yeah. Like those. Nice. All right. Whose smoke detector is going off? Is your smoke detector battery going off? Me? That's a safety issue. I didn't hear one. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's a common smoke, smoke oh. detector going off. Hey, what's going on here? <laughs> all right. Uh, do, 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 do. From, uh, do, do, do. All right. From Brittany in Hatfield, PA. Uh, what are your thoughts on how popular paranormal is today compared to when you first started? Which we actually we talked about that in the book a little bit um, in the in the opening. So go ahead and talk about that a little bit. Uh, what do I think of it? Um, I, yeah, I think like the differences from back then to to now. You know, I, I think it's awesome. Quite honestly, you know, uh, twenty even just as as little as, as twenty years ago, uh, it was you know a pretty hushed topic. There were you know people like the Warrens and of course. Uh, John Zad, you know, and people out there investigating taps, uh, you know, and, and myself, my team at the time. And um, but it was still something that unless other people were into it, it wasn't really talked about. People didn't want, uh, you know, anybody to know their house was haunted. They yeah. were the, the creepy person on the street, the, the house that people avoided, <laughs> the house that got talked about in, in the grocery yeah. stores. Uh, that was a real thing. Nobody wanted anybody to know their, their house was haunted. Yeah. Uh, and, and now, uh, quite honestly, you know, your house might sell for more if it's haunted, you know? So like, uh, it's a big difference. And to see uh, people really latch on to, to the field and what we do, uh, I think is really cool. It's inspired uh, a, a lot of people. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think that we necessarily, you know, uh, a lot of people say that if it wasn't for us, the paranormal wouldn't be, it may have caught up eventually. I think maybe we did propel it quite a bit yep um, so well you at least allowed people to pursue it without having to like you said you know feel awkward you know right yeah. and even you know when our first when our show first started one of the most common things i would get from people when they would stop me is you know i didn't even know people did this like mm -hmm. i would like to do this i didn't even know this was a thing uh i didn't i thought it was just in you know in in the movie poltergeist or whatever like they didn't think yeah. it was a real thing and now everybody knows it's a real thing uh, I talk to, uh, I hate, I'll use the word youngsters because they're like 11, 12 years old, you know, but I'll talk to them all the time and they're so inspired and they want to get out there mm -hmm. and investigate and, you know, they either want to do it to uh, just have fun and, and see what it's like and, and some really want to do it to get answers and, and help people. And that's cool yeah. to see both both sides of it. Yeah, it was cool. The, we did a book signing this weekend and seeing that little girl, I think it was like 10 or 12 or something. She's dressed in a full taps uniform, which you know, which was so cute that you know she's out there ready oh, yeah. to go and start yeah. investigating. You know, she had the fake tattoos, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, fake tattoos sleeves, fake awesome. tattoos. She's like, yeah. "I'm you." Oh, where's your beard? <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. Okay. All right, all right. Here's a deep one. All right, from Holly in Trafford, PA. A lot of Pennsylvania. Jeez. Um, do you think paranormal energy can be? physically manifested by a toxic type of an environment as in a house that had um, a lot of abuse, abusive types of behavior. Yes. Yes, I do. Yes. Um, I do think so. Um, and, but we, I'm not sure if the toxic house uh, or the toxic behavior is uh because of what's happening in the mm -hmm. paranormal or, or uh if it's the opposite there but uh we have seen that i have seen that where um you know people are at odds with each other and they're fighting in the house and they don't know why and, and mm -hmm. um then once you know we as investigators come in and do our thing and help them understand thing you know they they, they start to feel better and and, and you know, start to live their lives. And, and um, I do think that is true. And, and if you look at, you know, poltergeist kind of activity, uh, it is, you know, known and you do see that pattern uh, where it seems to be people that may not be in a strong mental state, you yeah. know, and whether that uh, allows them to be sort of 
picked on, if you will, a bit more, or if that is actually manifesting things. Uh, I don't think anybody knows, really. Uh, I would read the book Poltergeist by William G. Roll, uh, and it will mm. really open your world up to uh, just about all of uh, you know that uh, type of possibility. And of course, uh, ESP uh, hauntings and, and, and poltergeists uh, by Lloyd Auerbach uh, would also be required reading for anybody. Uh, yeah, and everybody else's books. Nice. All right. Another non-paranormal one. Sissy from Tallahassee. Kennedy and Joseph would like to know what is your favorite band and favorite song, which I know that's hard to narrow down. But well. I know those two. Hey, um, my favorite band. Gosh, that's a tough one. I don't, it, it, I mean, it's fluid. I'll say right now, um, I'm uh, listening to a lot of a band called Zeal and Ardor. Uh, Rivers of Nile I've been listening to quite a bit. Uh, Ghosts, uh, of course. Um, I've been on a Taylor Swift kick uh, quite a bit, <laughs> if we're being serious, uh, or honest, rather. Uh, the Misfits I, I come in and out of. Uh, it's hard to narrow it down. It, it really is. Um, if I had to say one right now and go with it for the rest of my life, maybe Iron Maiden. I don't know. That's, nice. that's a tough one. You guys, tough questions. What's happening here? <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. This one's kind of fun. Mia from Homewood. Uh, hi, Steve. If you were a ghoul, what would your haunting style be? When hinges creak in doorless chambers. <laughs> A haunted mansion reference i would uh, definitely yeah. be that kind of uh, ghost i would be <laughs> classic. Uh, just classic you know open a door here or there just play with people a little <laughs> bit little rapping sounds in the distance i think i would be one of those sort of mischievous kind of jovial mm -hmm. uh ghouls that uh just want to remind you that they're there and that if they wanted to they could probably make your life kind of miserable um but they're like i like you so i'm just gonna like Tap this door. <laughs> that would be my uh, I like it. <laughs> my line of haunting. I think. Mischievous. Jeez. Um, yes. Mischievous. <laughs> All right, Christine from Swansboro, North Carolina. I like this one. Here you go. What is the first thing you would do in a zombie apocalypse? Oh, I would. Um, I think I would try to find weapons some sort of weapons uh, likely it would be um you know there goes a pile of books if uh i would say definitely probably a bladed type of weapon uh, because if the lore is true and you start firing off guns and stuff you're just going to have yourself quite a, a, Very true. a, a Very problem true. um but I would like a machine gun or a Gatling gun or some sort of like sentry gun to just post out front. A sword. Sword? I guess so. Yeah. I'd find a sword uh, and then I'd find adequate shelter um, and food. You need food and water. So I do. Maybe not that order. But... Yeah, we need them all. All right. Do, 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 do. Tristan from Oakdale, PA. Well, you got a lot of fans of Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania's um, great. Love Pennsylvania. Always have. have. I grew up in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Have any spirits followed you home? If so, what did they do? And if not, do you have anything at the end of an investigation to prevent them from following you home? Oh, nothing has ever followed me home, luckily. Um, but... I will say that we don't know their interpretation of, of time and space, right? Um, so say I, I've investigated a place or acquired an, an item, you know, a haunted item or, or something and nothing happened. It doesn't mean nothing will never happen. You know, mm -hmm. maybe uh, to me it's, oh, I've had the, you know, 10 years of investigators, but uh, it, it, what I'm saying is it could eventually happen. But as of yeah. now, uh, nothing has ever happened that's made me believe that uh, I've brought something home with me um i would to be honest i wouldn't want it uh i like to visit it but i don't want it here um people who live in a real haunted house um you know they value uh, excuse me that they, they they have a hard time 
with things like uh, maintaining a, a relationship and, and maintaining a, a career or a job, uh, maintaining friendships. Um, mm. and, and I don't want any part of that. Uh, so I, I'd like to visit it, uh, not necessarily have it in my, my house. In terms of do I do anything to protect myself? Uh, I don't know. Mm -mm. We just go in, do yeah. it, or at least me speaking for myself, yeah. investigate and come home and yeah, or go to the hotel. Uh, maybe uh, it, uh, does video games count? Is that a way of like, <laughs> <laughs> them off. Yeah. I don't know. Sometimes that's like after an investigation, you get back at five, six in the morning. You really don't want to do anything but just go numb for a little bit. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's a long yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, one of the comments on the side here from D Doug Hogate Jr. is an update from uh, Ghost Nation. Steve says that uh, where are we in South Jersey on Ghost Nation, uh, I want to let you know that the high EMF was resolved and that the family is still doing great. Oh, Doug, what's up, dude? Um, Doug was there with us uh, yep. as uh, the, the local investigator. That's good to know. Uh, that's cool that you followed through on that because, uh, as you know, a seasoned investigator yourself, uh, you need to really uh, think of those things. And uh, we all want it to be a ghost. We really do. But it does nobody any good to, to fool yourself or somebody else or your client. So getting to the bottom of things is always so good job, dude. Awesome. That's really cool to know. Very nice. All right. Mina in Los Angeles, California. Uh, ghost Hunters has been my favorite ghost hunting group for over a decade. I love the chemistry between all of you and how collaborative you all are. My question is, what do you believe is the key to the longevity of Ghost Hunters and how do you guys maintain it? That's a good uh, question there. That's a good question. I, I, think, um, I think a lot of things. I do think that you know, we were definitely friends before the show, not Tango, not offensively, but he didn't come along till, you know, season two. Mm -hmm. um, but we were all genuinely friends and we all loved each other. And, and you know, the TV show came along and, and then we got Tango and that, uh, you know, he immediately, we became best friends and, and everybody loves him and we all he fit right into the family. And it is that, you know, we really do love each other and, and, uh, and I think that shows on camera, like when Jay and I, when Tango and I, when we laugh, it's real, it's hard, you know, and, and they can see that and they know that. Yeah. Um, and then I think we're very lucky to be one of, or if not the first show of its kind. Uh, and I think that, you know, lends us some <clears throat> sort of, uh, you know, at least in the public's eyes, uh, like, oh, these are, are, are people I want to continue to follow um, because they are how I remember it starting, that sort of thing, maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I think the way we investigate is, is attractive to people in terms of uh, not thinking everything is a ghost, you know, trying to get to the bottom of things. Uh, they know that we don't really exaggerate things and go, you know, yeah. and I think they, they, they like that. Um, I'd say those are probably. Yeah, uh, a, lot, a lot of the chemistry and stuff, too. Yeah. Chemistry, for sure. Like yeah. we are. Uh, who we are you know people say it so when they meet us all the time like oh you are jason haas you are yeah. dave tango you are it's like yeah. <laughs> these tattoos don't come off i really am afraid of you get off and take it off <laughs> You're like, oh, forget this. Uh, but a lot of people like really think that we are you know playing a character of sorts yeah. and the tv world is weird where you sort of become a character because that's how people know of you uh, but you're just yourself you know mm -hmm. so very strange all right, question on the side here from Carmen. I think it's actually kind of an interesting question. Um, would you ever use a psychologist during an investigation? Yes, very good question. We have, uh, and uh, I'll, con yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the problem with that, or at least the only problem I've come across, is people get very, very offended uh, mm -hmm. when you offer that as yeah, understandable, you know, yeah. part of your investigation. They really do. Uh, especially when children are involved, if you want them to talk and see if they can get, uh, parents get very, very upset. My kid's not this. They know what they see. They know what they experience, you know. Uh, and same with them, you know, but there are people who aren't like that uh, at all. And those are, uh, you know, uh, a, a rare case. Um, but that's a great question. And that is something that we do. Uh, we'll definitely use a psychologist and even go further 
you know, even deeper into that with, you know, psychiatric care and, and that sort of thing. But uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. And even aftercare for some people, uh, that is not offensive to them, where after, if they're still having a hard time, you know, resolving things in their head, we have offered uh, psych, you know, uh, psychology as a, as a, you know, aftercare scenario. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, Matt here, we're here with a non uh, paranormal question. It says, I see you're in, into horror, Steve. Uh, do you have a big collection? I'm a huge horror nerd and have tons of collectibles and masks. And 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 my favorite here, he said he has a bunch of uh, Kane Hodder masks, which <laughs> I love that. So uh, tell us about your Whoa. horror, love for horror and your collection. Um, I do love horror. I've always loved horror. Um, Return of the Living Dead was the first movie I ever bought with my own money. Uh, and... Uh, I didn't even know what money was. I remember just throwing it up on the couch. <laughs> um, yeah, I've always loved horror. It, it means so much to me. Um, I grew up with it. I feel like I was raised by uh, Jason and, uh, you know, all those. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I have covered in horror movie tattoos. Um, a lot of horror books. Behind me isn't much horror, but if I could turn the camera around, you'd yeah. see a, a lot of stuff. I have, you know, Mike's, you know, uh, but uh, that's one of the reasons I, you know, hooked up with, with Mike is being a, a horror fan. Uh, I knew of Mike's work. Uh, I knew of Kane Hodder's biography and, and had read that and uh, really liked it. And, uh, you know, uh, very shyly approached Mike and, you know, like a little, Mike, would you maybe want to work together? Because I'm so you know? massive in the industry. <laughs> Listen, man, uh, my, you know, Tom Savini is like a, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, and uh, you you talk to him like he's your your best. I'm like, oh my god! Uh, I, no, I, was the, is, uh, I was I was on the phone with you, and then Tom called on the other line, and you got so nervous. You're like, what? Tom's calling? You're like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I think I just hung up. What? <laughs> it's funny seeing someone who's been on TV for 20 years get nervous with like a another celebrity. You know, you're like, oh my god. Yeah, yeah I, uh, horror is my, I mean, I like all movies, but horror yeah. has always been, uh, yeah, love it, love it, love it, uh, yeah, horror movies, uh, The Thing, awesome, I've been fortunate yeah. enough to meet a, a lot of, you know, my yeah. horror idols, I guess you'd say, uh, I was lucky enough to go to Tom Savini's house once. Which is the greatest um, place on earth, yeah. Oh, it was so cool, I went there with uh, Scream Magazine, mm -hmm. um, my buddy at the time, Josh Emmerich, was a writer for them, and I went with... Uh, Harrison uh, Smith, awesome guy, a director. Um, look up his movies. He's great. Uh, loves horror. And, man, we picked Tom Savini's brain for five hours. It was so <laughs> awesome. Uh, he, yeah. he was making, uh, you know, uh, red sauce on the stove. Yeah, thing. cooking in but, his kitchen. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, yeah. Uh, for the non-horror people, they're like, can we move on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, we can Next go on question, for three please. hours. That, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, we'll talk for three hours about the horror movies. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. All right. Um do, do okay here's an interesting one from sarah um any thoughts on what region um or area of the u.s is the most haunted and if so uh do you have a, a theory basically on why why it is um you know it does seem that new england uh mm -hmm. pennsylvania uh and likely Virginia, North Carolina, it, it seems to be some of the most haunted regions in the country. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with history. You know, the, the mm -hmm. longer you've had some sad to say, but traumatic history, uh, you know, the, the more time that is available for these moments in time to be trapped yeah. or for something to decide to return or, or stay there for whatever reason. Uh, I, I think so. And, and I know, you know, St. Augustine, Florida and other places were settled uh, before you know massachusetts that sort of thing or at least uh had you know people on land not necessarily settled if that's the right word but um so i, I think that's uh, a lot of it is is the history more time for history uh to happen and, and things to really and they may be a little more modern because you know i don't know how much of the love and devotion you know happened in, in you know a long time ago it, it feels a little more um but i'd say these these areas yeah those, yeah, those areas, I should say, uh, mm -hmm. regionally. And I think it would have to do with history. That would be my my guess on it. Yeah, I like that. Um, do, 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 do. Where was the one I just lost? Um, 
Oh my gosh. Oh, all right. From Linda. Uh, I have always had experiences during the day. Do you guys ever uh, investigate during the day? Yes. Good. Great question. Uh, we investigate during the day for sure. Uh, we always try to investigate when the client tells us that they had the experience. Uh, so if they say, hey, we had the experience at uh, you know, 11 p.m. and the TV was on, uh, but not all the lights are off. That's how we are going to investigate because we have a better chance of experiencing the phenomena and a better chance of disproving the phenomena if we are recreating the conditions in which they had the experience. Um, mm -hmm. But if they tell us that, uh, you know, it was uh, 5 p.m. in the afternoon and I was just walking through my living room, uh then we're going to investigate that at 5 p.m and you know we will do yeah. that we'll probably investigate it at night too uh, because at night uh, another thing that's interesting is you have the ability to see things uh, that are in the visible spectrum uh, but also see things that your gadgets uh, that the gadgetry can pick up so say you have a full spectrum camera uh, i can also now pick up things in the visible spectrum uh, but also in the infrared spectrum, uh, in ultraviolet spectrum, and different things that your eyes can't see, and, and you don't really uh, able to. Do, you're not really able to do that in the daytime. Um, and also, we find at night, uh, people get really quiet, and they tend to focus and really mm -hmm. soak in the environment more. Uh, and you're a bit more likely uh, to 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 see things and, and experience things that are happening around you. And then also, some of the phenomena is illuminated. Uh, so, for instance, if I, you know, turned a flashlight on in this room that's quite uh, bright, uh, you'd likely wouldn't see it. Uh, but if it was dark in here, you would definitely see that uh, mm. light. So um, those would be the, the, the reasons, I think, for uh, personally and for most of the investigators I know, uh, it doesn't really have to be at night. Uh, if it happens in the day, uh, we, we should investigate it during the day. Yeah, I like that. All right, Jason asks, uh, is there any beliefs or theories that have changed for you over time? Which that's kind of interesting. Yes, yeah. Um, there are a lot of theories um, that have changed my mind. Like, I always thought that getting into science deeper and say physics would dispel a lot of my belief in the paranormal, but I wanted to, you know, do it anyway. Uh, learn a bit, uh, but it actually strengthened uh, my belief because, you know, I, I, say I would see um, a metal object float or something. Maybe I would immediately, if I uh, immediately sort of think that's impossible, there's no way that can happen. I imagined it, it didn't happen, you know, but knowing that, okay, if I could get the milligas up to 10,000 in this room, uh, metal objects will levitate and move around. Uh, maybe it's possible that something could make that happen. Whereas if I didn't know that 10,000 milligas could make, uh, you know, metal objects float, um, then, you know, I would maybe dispel that. Uh, and that's why, you know, you can't wear rings and necklaces and an MRI machine. It'll yeah. just get sucked into the machine because they're, <laughs> they're at 10,000 milligas, you know, which is about the, the strength that your body can take. Um, and even other things, you know, for instance, uh, microwaves, you know, how they work. Uh, if I didn't know that, I would maybe believe that uh, that the other things are impossible. You know, they, they uh, just take microwaves and, and they found that a certain microwave uh, can uh, make water molecules uh, vibrate really quickly, which in turn creates heat, uh, which is what uh, creates the heat in your food. That's how your, your food gets gets hot, uh, which is also why it tends to dry out because all that water, you know, ends up yeah. uh, evaporating. And it's also why most of the time the plates aren't hot because there's no moisture in a, in a plate or, or yeah. a vessel. If the plate's hot, it's because the food ended up becoming hot. But mm -hmm. knowing that if an object's moved, did something find a way to manipulate air molecule or something to make, so I don't know, I'm making that up. Yeah. But, uh, I think going down those paths actually made me look at things and not dispel them right away, but actually look and say, there is a way that this could happen in the physical world, because if you're into science at all, you would know that if it disobeys the laws of science, then you can't be experiencing it in the physical world. It just can't be happening. Yeah. Um, so knowing that there are ways that it could happen, 
I think opens my brain a bit more. That's a good question. I don't want to get science talking because it really bores <laughs> a lot of people or gets them to right say, on. this guy is just a pretentious weirdo. <laughs> you know, yeah. Take it seriously, uh, but, that's why. Well, I mean, uh, yeah. you know, uh, I just think it's kind of important to really get to the bottom of things and not fool ourselves. Yeah. Uh, Tina asks if the book will be available on Audible. It will be, but you can't get it signed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, excuse me, can you sign my phone on the on the thing? Uh, but yeah, it will uh, be Audible. But it's uh, the signed books are here. Um, uh, that's a good right, one. Yes, one... cannot. <laughs> it's true. It'd be funny though. Uh, Kimberly wants to know what is your favorite chapter in the book, or do you have a favorite chapter? Whoa. Hmm. Hard to pick. Wow. That's the first time I've been asked that question. That's yeah. a great question. Um, I would think maybe the introduction, because, you know, family, you'd learn a little bit about my mom yep. and dad, that sort of thing. But it's a very quick chapter. It's a very short part of, of the book. Mm -hmm. This isn't a, a memoir by any stretch. But uh, that part is, is quite nice. Um, I might like, we cover a bit of um, an experience that uh, I had in Alexandria, Louisiana. Uh, I really mm -hmm. like that. Uh, it was at the Alexandria Zoo. Uh, it was a very emotional experience. Uh, that place is is pretty. That might be my. I don't know if I have a favorite chapter. They all are are quite special in, in different ways, honestly. Um, but I think oh, Waverly Hills is a good one too. This is a hard mm -hmm. question. This might be out of all the awesome questions, the hardest one yet. <laughs> the Theodore's chapter is awesome. I love that yep. place. So, oh gosh. I would say um, maybe Alexandria Zoo. Maybe. I don't know. Well, There's a lot of funny stories in there, like a lot of laughter. Jim yeah, that's true. Yeah. Play a good, good yeah. trick on me. And, and there are some great experiences. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we caught an apparition there. We cover that. Uh, you know, so uh, that's a good chapter for scary, for emotional, for poignant, for history. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, for history. Um, that's a good one. That's nice. Good. Yeah. I mean, I, I personally like the, the introduction as well because it kind of, you get to see the stuff that you don't see in the show, you know, by seeing, you know, how you kind of got yeah. to where you are, which is really nice. One thing, you know, the Waverly Hills chapter, the way that we sort of put the reader there in the mm -hmm. building, you know, with me, yeah. I, I think is going to be really cool. Uh, yeah. That in Alcatraz, the way like, just when you read about my experiences there, it's really awesome how you'll feel like you're there with me. You'll get the scents, the smells, you'll get the texture of the walls, yeah. you'll get the sounds that you're hearing, you'll get the thoughts that are going through my brain. Uh, you'll get all of that. And I love that that vivid picture uh, yeah. of being put there with us. When you're reading it, you're not gonna go, oh, he's at this place. You're gonna go, where are we? You know, like, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> Read it in the dark. Um, if you dare. Yeah. This one from uh, Leslie in Lakeview, Ohio, kind of for me, but uh, I want to ask you as well, uh, says, do you play music while you write? And if so, what's your favorite? Um, for myself, when I write, I actually, um, I only listen to orchestral movie scores um, because there's no words. And because so, when there's anything with words, I find myself, I'll start to start singing them and get a little distracted. And movie scores have that built-in emotional, you know, ups and downs into it. And so I always find myself getting really into the music, like, oh, yeah, you know, like kind of writing along with it. Um, so I always listen to orchestral music. But Steve, when you were reading over the chapters and giving notes in this net, were you listening to music or did you do it with nothing? Yeah, uh, sometimes there's music in the background, uh, but a lot of times I'm just in a Starbucks in my own world or in a yeah. library or uh sitting right here and there's not really music just uh doing doing that music tends to distract me if i'm working unless it's soft yeah. and in the background i like that idea yeah. of a orchestral yeah score that sounds awesome yep hmm. yeah that way i can focus without the words i can focus on it huh. um right. kasaya i apologize if i messed up your name in west valley city utah um asks if you have any plans to investigate in utah but i want to change it a little bit to have you have you investigated in utah because i can't think of anything that we've ever talked about in uh utah that you've done utah have i been to uh, um salt lake city i don't think we've actually investigated in utah proper hmm. um i could be wrong uh, what i usually do I have a trick when people ask me that because we've been to so many that 
I've had the same email address the whole time. Mm -hmm. uh, for, well, not the whole time I've been investigating, but the whole time we've done the show and the whole time that I've been with TAPS and my own team, New England Paranormal, whatever. So I usually just do a search and it'll come up if I've been there, but I don't want to do that right now because it seems really Yeah, good. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Nothing <laughs> off your mind that pops up. But yeah. so off the top of my mind, I'm not sure. Definitely driven through it. The Salt Flats are beautiful. Uh, I've been to Salt Lake City for the, the Comic-Con. Uh, made my way through the uh, Mormon Temple. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, nice. um, yeah. Uh, uh, I don't remember an investigation there. I could be wrong. I'm so sorry. Uh, all right, so I think we have about time for about one, one maybe two more questions. Uh, Morgan from Milford, Delaware asks, after all of your years in the paranormal, what is one major question you still have that has yet to be answered, and are you trying to get that answer? It's a great question. It's a loaded question that I think will be hard to answer. Um, so just off the top of my head without putting much thought into it, I would say I'm intrigued by the mechanics. Like how, you know, if there is a, and you know, we use a lot of these terms interchangeably, but uh, if there is a ghost there, how, you know, why did it decide to return? Is it trapped somehow? Is it just there? Uh, I think the mechanics behind uh, the phenomena is really really uh fascinating and, and that is one of the things I, I am looking for answers to is the, the how you know how uh, did you decide are you just here are you trapped maybe there's no conscious to it at all which we do see that there's a residual type of haunting without conscious thoughts you know but how did that happen we have theories but uh, that is, is really intriguing to me and, and even you know uh why can some people have you know uh, abilities that others don't uh, you know i want i want to have psychic abilities and, and <laughs> i want to be able to you know i mean maybe not all the psychics i know and love uh have told me that it's not very fun yeah you know, i would imagine you know, yeah. it's it's it can be but uh it's not something they can just turn off uh, you know if you are open to that you got to be open to that 24 hours a day you know yeah. and to a lot of them that is a weight that they aren't always excited about uh, but um, it seems like it would be pretty awesome. You know, what are those winning numbers? Uh, what are those? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. Cool. All right. We only got about two minutes left, so let's wrap okay. this up. Uh, there is a ton of you who got the book already from Premier Collectibles Autographed. Um, we thank you for that. And hopefully you'll leave us a review and leave Premier Collectibles a nice review on their site. And for those of you who have not gotten it yet, uh, you can get it at premiercollectibles.com, Life with Ghost. You can get a signed copy, as you see Steve signing them right there. Um, and we appreciate and thank all of you for coming out. And Steve, I'll give you the last words. Guys, uh, please let us know uh, what you think. Um, and we'd love some uh, uh, feedback, uh, quite honestly, because a lot yeah. of these stories are really just mean a lot to me. And, and now I, I think Mike as well. And uh, you know, uh, knowing what people think about it, whether it's through reviews or direct messages or comments, yeah. uh, will really be uh, pretty awesome to see. And, and thank you for everybody who ordered the book, who planned to get it, who planned to uh, read it. Uh, come find me, say hi, and, and let me know what you think. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, and we'd love to do another one. So definitely give us your uh, your feedback and <laughs> tell us what you'd like to see in a in another book. Right. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, guys. Hey, this is John Acuff, New York Times best-selling author of seven books and someone who's done a live signing. If you like the one you just watched, make sure you check out our YouTube channel. It's full of amazing authors having great conversations and signing books for viewers just like you. So make sure you subscribe and thanks for watching today.